All right, hello and welcome. So today we're going to talk about uniques and sets and how to farm them. So if you're not familiar with uniques and sets, they are items that have special attributes. Uniques have some sort of unique attribute on them. And sets, if you put multiple together, will give you a special bonus. Uh, if you want more information on how those work, check out our gearing guide on that. We actually have a beginner uh, gear walkthrough, it's actually called. Check that out and you'll get some more information on that. This is gonna be specifically about how to farm uniques and sets that you might need. So there's quite a few strategies and different strategies for different items. So you're gonna wanna check this out if you're looking for a particular item and you don't know how to get it. This is also a companion to Max Roll. So uh, definitely be checking out that guide if you need further information going forward or wanna check in some of the things that uh, I said or in the middle of something and forgot, this is a great way to get the information that you need quickly without having to watch the video. All right, let's get into this. So again, Uniques and sets, special items. A lot of them are build enabling um, or build defining. So very highly sought after items for just about every build. The first one we're gonna talk about though as far as farming methods and where to go to get these things is boss specific uniques and sets. So this is something that Last Epoch does maybe more so they lean more into this concept than a lot of ARPGs do where certain bosses will have a loot table for certain uniques and sets that only they drop so they can be relatively easily target farmed under most circumstances if you are going after that particular unique and it's on that particular boss or set. You just go kill that boss until you get it. There are, however, different, we'll say rarities for bosses uh, and different ways that loot tables work on different kinds of bosses. For example, there's Monolith of Fate bosses, there are dungeon bosses, um, there's actually even arena bosses for the, the, the new arena system or newish arena system. So knowing how they work in each one is valuable information and knowing where you have to look is also valuable information. Let's go over that here quickly. So we'll start with the timeline bosses. These are the ones that show up in the model of fate. So you're doing a particular timeline at the end of it. You get enough stability and you kill the boss and it drops stuff and some of that stuff is gonna be at least one of them is going to be a unique. So the first tier that they drop is a it's what we're going to call common. And there's always two of these for every boss uh, for the timeline bosses. And you're guaranteed to get one. And what the one you get, you're guaranteed not to get the other one. They're mutually exclusive. So 50% chance that you'll get one or the other. You'll never get both. As far as uh, the next tier, though, there is rare, where there's a small chance that the boss will drop it on kill. This is again different from common. There's those two that are exclusive. This one is not exclusive and not tied to the common. Uh, this one can drop. Um, uh, excuse me. This one has uh, every every boss has one of these as well, and the drop chance can be improved with item rarity, which can be increased from corruption and just from good modifiers. These also can drop in non-empowered, but are more easily farmed in empowered. The next tier is rare empowered only. So this is similar to rare. It is not tied to the other tiers. They can drop, like you can drop a common and the rare version and the rare empowered only version. All of those can drop on the same boss. Uh, there's no exclusion there, but they only do drop, they do only drop in empowered. So you have to be in an empowered timeline, which means you're at hundred corruption and they have a pretty small chance of dropping, but again, can be improved with item rarity. So higher a corruption and better modifiers when fighting the boss will improve your chances of getting these items that fall into this category. Now there's one other category which is exclusive to one item, which is Ravenous Void. Ravenous Void is a pretty famous item in the game. It's pretty well sought after. It's a very tanky item. If you wanna get these, there are two ways to get them. They can be a random drop in the world, but they have an incredibly low chance of that happening. It's very, very unlikely that you're gonna get it as a random drop. However, you can, farm the husk of elder Ga uh, gaspar who's one of the timeline bosses and he has a very small chance of dropping it but will improve prove it with corruption up to a three percent chance actually i believe this is now a four percent chance so i should fix that in this guide that's uh it's newly changed to a four percent chance to drop at the highest corruption which i believe is something like four or five hundred i don't remember exactly but as you push it up you get a better chance so about a four percent chance at best it's still not a great drop rate but if you really really want those that's the only way to reasonably target them all right let's move on from the timeline bosses to the monolith bosses excuse me to the dungeon bosses 
So these are like Jolra in the uh, uh, Temporal Sanctum, the Lightless Arbor boss, the Mountain Beneath, those kind of bosses. So they, they have um, four, they have four tiers of dungeons, right? They have tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, with tier four being the hardest and tier one being the easiest. Each tier has its own unique or set that can drop from it. It also only has one of each tier. You have to be at that tier in order to drop the item. So if you're tier two, you can only see tier two or tier one items drop. If you're tier four, you have a chance to get all of them. A higher tier can drop, um, excuse me, a higher tier can drop any unique or set from lower tiers. Again, so if you're tier four, tier three, tier two, tier one can also drop at tier four. But if you're tier three, tier four will not drop. You have to be at the level, at the tier of the item. Um, that you want to get, which I think makes a lot of sense to just about everybody. Dungeon boss uniques and sets are not mutually exclusive. So unlike the common version of the timelines, you can drop multiple. If you're on tier four, you can technically drop all four. Uh, lower tier uniques and sets have a better drop rate though than higher tier ones. So the tier one is much more likely to drop than the tier four. All right, next up is Arena of Champions. This is a newer game mode that um, this is kind of its really only significant use right now is it has a number of uniques in it so we have um the omen of thunder penumbra and uh, vion's chariot that drop here and they drop off specific bosses so alfred wolfmaw drops the omen of thunder crimson blade drops penumbra and vion the arsenal drops vion's chariot which one of these you will fight in the arena of champion at any given time is completely random however you can go to higher tiers of the arena of champion to give yourself an increased drop chance. So even though you can't control which one you'll fight, if you're looking for Penumbra, there's no guarantee you'll get Crimson Blade in any given run. If you're at higher tiers and you do get the Crimson Blade, you have a better chance of getting Penumbra. So push this on higher tiers if, uh, if you're looking for a particular unique off of arena of champions. All right, the last one that's a boss specific is Shade of Orbis, who works pretty uniquely. This is also in the timeline, but it's not a timeline boss, or it's in a model of fate in the timelines. It shows up uh, in the web. The farther out you go, the more likely you are to see, uh, see Shade of Orbis. The higher corruption you are, the more likely you are to see Shade of Orbis. And when you do, you can fight them to reset your, um, your timeline, your web, and that will affect your corruption. You get higher or lower corruption, depending on which one you fight. But what we care about right here is when you fight them, him, he will also drop um, some uniques, potentially. So the first one he has is Siphon of Anguish, which is a common drop and can drop from any shade regardless of the corruption. It's very, very likely to drop on any particular um, fight that you, you'll have with, uh, with Shade of Orbis. If you don't get that, you'll probably get Stymied Fate, which is an uncommon drop. It can also drop... Um, at any level of corruption and again drop rates are improved by item rarity the next one up is apathy's maw this gets a little bit more um challenging to get it's an uncommon drop but also requires a level 60 or five or higher shade by the way stymied fate requires 60 or higher so i think the very first um the very first time i can't drop it but the rest i believe can apathy's maw also requires 50 corruption though so it's technically technically can drop on normal non-empowered timelines however you have to push it all the way to its maximum corruption and you have the lowest drop rate you can possibly have. So we highly recommend that if you're going for Apathy's Maw, you farm this on Unempowered and push your corruption up. That way, don't try to do it on Unempowered. You're going to have a bad time. The next one is Shattered Chains, which is a rare drop that requires at least 120 corruption. Like all of these, higher corruption is better. Shattered Chains, definitely harder to get than Apathy's Maw, but not crazy hard. However, Omnis, the last one here, is very rare. It requires at least 200 corruption. And again, you want to push a lot further than that if you're really trying to try to get this item. Omni is a very difficult item to get. You can get him to drop it, but get him to roll the right rolls for you is definitely going to be a challenge. But it's possible as long as you're above 200 corruption. Okay, let's move on from the boss specific ones to random drops or uniques and sets, which will cover effectively anything that wasn't covered. Uh, previously so if it wasn't a boss item it is a random item except for two that we'll cover in a bit here there's only two other uniques that don't fall into this everything else does so random drops can drop basically anywhere in the world any enemy can drop them it's just chance do you get lucky or do you not get lucky however there are strategies to target certain items that are random drops for example if we look at the unique e echo rewards here if you need a pair of boots, a unique pair of boots, um, let's say you need Dark Stride for the Warpath build, which get, lets you go faster the more melee void damage you have. 
if you farm the timeline that offers boot unique rewards as an echo reward then you can significantly increase your chance of getting this you just go and you hunt those echo rewards every timeline has a list of uh, of unique ones that, that it will it will offer and it will tell you on the bottom right here it will tell you what kind that timeline offers and to make it even more handy for you we have a nice little drop down here that will tell you exactly where you need to go so if it was the case that you're looking for dark stride and you were trying to get those through the monolith of fate you just look here and it's spirits of fire is boots so you know you go to spirits of fire you farm that increase your corruption because echo rewards rarity is affected by corruption so higher rarity echo rewards are more likely to show up on the different islands in the in the web if you have higher corruption these are considered rarer so you will definitely want to push your corruption to see more boots if you're trying to get it that way this is a very reliable way to farm these um it's a pretty good option especially if it's used with other options so if they're using in, in, in conjunction in conjunction excuse me with other choices for example rune of ascendance this is a crafting item that allows you to take any item type for example a pair of boots craftable boots so common magic rare or exalted all fit that description and it will then turn that into a unique or set uh, pair of boots it can be any unique or set pair of boots it doesn't matter what kind of boots you threw in what the item level of the boots was none of that matters it just matters that you put a pair of boots in you use Rune of Ascendance, you will get back a unique or set of any potential rarity or level that exists in the game. So it's a very simple process. You can't screw it up. It doesn't matter what you put in as long as you put in boots. If you're looking for boots, you'll get back boots and you have a chance to get any of the boots that exist that are unique or sets. Okay, so if you get some of these to drop while you're hunting for, for example, Dark Strides, while you're farming spirit of fire to get them you also throw some boots in you rune of ascendance see if you can get dark stride out that way you've significantly increased your chances of getting those at least a lot faster than you would have before with only one strategy instead of two so we definitely recommend that you combine strategies like that to get the items that you were looking for to further improve your chances of getting the items you want because these do drop in the world as well kind of just randomly even you're not directly target farming them like through the, the, the two previous strategies you can also look for um, the unique blessing that drops off of fall of the outcast abomination and that will increase the likelihood that you get um, any uniques to drop which therefore increases the likelihood you get the unique you want to drop is this a reliable method not particularly but it can be added to the other options and if you're looking for multiple uniques it becomes even more powerful so this is definitely another option if you're really trying to target uniques you don't care about the other blessings that abomination offers at least at that particular time and definitely get the empowered one because it's it's better okay the next option is the vaults of uncertain fate so this is kind of a complex option i guess you could say there's multiple ways to approach it and here we talk specifically about um the fact that you can use this to get uniques and stats because that is an option in the Vaults of Uncertain Fate. So if you're not familiar with the Vaults of Uncertain Fate, and we of course do have a guide in the Lightless Arbor Dungeon where the Vaults of Uncertain Fate um, exists, you go into the Vault and it gives you modifiers that cost gold. And as you choose modifiers, they will increase the rewards you get in the Vault, which is going to be a bunch of uh, treasure chests, but also increase the cost as you continue to add them up until a certain point to where you know you can't go any further there's a certain level that you can't go past for every tier some of those things do allow you to get a lot of uniques and sets if you're willing to spend the gold however it's a really good place the vaults is to get exalteds and crafting materials so we don't really recommend that you get uniques or sets from this strategy but you can use it to get rune of ascendance and then use those to get the boots. And that is a good strategy because you can get your runes of ascendance, you can get uh, glyphs of despair and all a bunch of other crafting materials from the uh, the vaults of a certain vein, from the lightless armor, and kind of you know hit on multiple paths there. You're helping your crafting out. You're still farming for your uniques. You're not wasting the gold on a less efficient method. 
So that one is a method that we do recommend. If you have the gold and want to spend it that way, it can be a pretty good option to also improve the likelihood that you're going to get the unique cute that you want. All right, the last one is the Soul Gambler. This is from Soulfire Bastion. You kill enemies there, you get souls at the end of it, you gamble, but in the process, you're going to pick up some modifiers. So some of the modifiers that you can pick up in the Soul Gambler are like the first item purchased from the Soul Gambler will be a unique or set item, or it has a higher chance of being a unique or set item on lower dungeon tiers. Uniques from the Soul Gambler have a percent increased chance of having at least one legendary potential, where each implicit mod and unique or set item from the Soul Gambler has a percent uh, chance to roll twice in its range to pick the higher value. So these are ways that you can like target not only getting unique, but trying to get a better version of the unique. Uh, so here's an option, of course, uh, but uh, do bear in mind that it's not necessarily the easiest way to target um, the Soul Gambler. And um, it's not like there's other options. Honestly, the Soul Gambler right now is not necessarily the greatest thing, but if I was gonna use it personally, it's probably gonna be to try to get some sealed affixes on some Exalteds. Um, yeah so this is also not the, like a great option you you can you if they get bored because right now the soul gamblers doesn't have a really obvious place the sealed affixes are good but not great they're very um very very rng extremely rng that you're going to get anything that you want and the soul gamblers not a very well balanced dungeon right now either so we don't really recommend it but if you're really bored <laughs> this is one way you could go all right let's talk about the other two uniques that also exist that are neither bosses or um, random drops, and that is campaign uniques. Currently, there are only two. Like I said, when I said there's two uniques, but there could be more, right? Because this, uh, this is a quest. There's a quest that offers you a choice between Avarice or Gambler's Fallacy. It's very early in the campaign. And depending on who you talk to after you complete the objectives will determine which one of the items you get. It's the only way to get these items currently. Uh, these items cannot roll with legendary potential for that reason. But there are also better versions of these in the Soulfire Bastion. The so Burning Avarice and Soul Gambler's Fallacy also exist, have the same stats plus extra stats. So these are great for leveling, like when you are leveling and you want to pick one because it's good, like the elemental resistance, uh, resistance on Avarice is really, really good, for example. Um, and if you happen to be elemental, even better because you get leech. But uh, not, nothing you have to worry about, like farming. Like don't farm these. Like, just, they, they can't get LP. You're going to you get one, you're good. You're pretty much ready to go. Uh, there is also one other item, actually. There's technically, I, I forgot to mention, or forgot about this. There is a third one. So it's not a quest so to speak but there's an area called the verdant lakes with a mini boss called orcurian the rampant i think i say that right it might be orcurian i don't know anyway if you kill him he is guaranteed to drop orcurian's petals which is a like fizz spell item so if you need this you can get it from there he also has an upgraded version too though called ashes of orcurian so you don't need to worry about it in there only if it's worth your time but again, none of these need to be farmed because there are upgraded versions that can be farmed. So you go for those. All right, let's talk about corruption. Corruption is a, a, another way of improving unique and set drop rates in four ways. We did talk a little bit about this before, but we'll kind of cover it again. So it increases the likelihood that a random drop will be a unique or set. So this is a general improvement, kind of like the blessing where you just improve, improve your, um, your drop rates of uniques. This will also do that just by increasing your corruption. It also improves the chance that the unique or set timeline echo reward will appear on the timeline web. I mentioned this earlier. So like if you're looking for the boots and you're in Spirits of Fire and you increase your corruption, you're more likely to find the boot echo rewards. So therefore you should increase your corruption. It increases the chance that a timeline boss or shade of Orbis will drop rare uniques or set items. We of course talked about this as well. Um, and some of the Shade of Orbis uniques require a certain amount of corruption order to drop. We also mentioned that. So you can see here that improving your corruption is definitely a valuable thing to do. It will in increase your chance of getting lots of different uniques. And if you're target farming uniques that require corruption or drop of a boss, you especially want to do it because if they're rare, they're going to be a little bit less rare. All right, the last thing we will talk about is legendary potential and farming it. 
So we haven't really talked too much about Legendary Potential yet, but um, if you are not familiar with it, we have a Legendary Items Crafting Guide to cover the bases for you. But the, the really, really basic, basic um, idea here of Legendaries is you have a unique, it can drop with Legendary Potential. For example, Urzel's Pride here has three Legendary Potential. And if you slam in an Exalted Item through the dungeon, through Temporal Sanctum, you will pull off a number of the affixes on that exalted item. In this case, you'd pull off three because it's three legendary potential. If you had one, you'd pull off one. If you had two, you'd pull off two. If you had four, you'd pull off all four of the non-sealed affixes on an item or on an exalted item. So how does this work and how do we farm it? Well, first, let's go over the, some of the details. Uh, set items cannot have LP ever. They never have it. So there's no point in farming for it. Area level is the only way to directly increase LP drop rates. That is important to know. Currently, at least, there is no way to increase LP drop rates outside of area level. So level 100 will give you the highest likelihood that any particular unique will have legendary potential. Now, of course, if you increase the number of uniques that drop, you also increase the number of uniques with legendary potential that will drop, but you won't be specifically changing the likelihood of any particular unique having it. So higher LP is also rarer than the lower LP. So an LP4 is much rarer than an LP1. That probably seems obvious, but just, you know, got to point it out. Also, uniques have a hidden stat called legendary potential level, and this is something that's definitely not obvious. This stat determines how likely unique is to have LP and also makes higher LP much rarer. For example, some uniques like the Wings of Argentis have very poor legendary potential, which makes even low LP very hard to get and four to L four, three to four LP astronomically rare. If I remember correctly, the likelihood of getting or the drop rate of getting four LP Wings of Argentis on any particular drop of Wings of Argentis, so like Wings of Argentis drops, what's the likelihood it's four LP is something like one in 16 quintillion right now. Needless to say, you're not getting that one, so don't try. You could get one, you could get one LP, but you're not gonna get four. Some items can definitely get four LP, and we've seen them from time to time. Three LP is kinda common on certain items. I use common like loosely here, but we definitely see quite a few three LP items. But once you get up to these things that have the higher legendary potential, much less likely. And as a general rule of thumb, it's not does not hold for all cases, but as a general rule of thumb, if the item is considered better, like it's like a best in slot for something or build, build defining, like really, really powerful, like uh, Ravenous Void, for example, Wings of Argentis, then it's gonna have a worse legendary potential level, a higher one, which means it's worse, less, less likely to drop it. And if it's not something like that, then it's probably gonna have a lower one and be more, more likely to get legendary potential. Okay, another thing to know is boss specific uniques from Julra and only Julra from the Temporal Sanctum always have at least one LP. This is so that every time you run it, she also all, all will always run or always uh, have an exalted of that type. These two things happen because the devs want to make sure anytime you run it, you have the opportunity to make a legendary. So you'll get one item with LP, at least one, and then you'll get an exalted that fits it. So if it's a ring with one LP, an exalted ring will also drop that you can slam into it if you want to. Okay. Now I'm just gonna read this to you. Due to the extreme variance in drop rates for LP items, we recommend not target farming an LP unique unless you can be sure that the drop rate is within reason. Too many items that theoretically can have LP are so difficult to find that the effort will not be worth the payoff and many multi LP items are effectively unachievable regardless of time spent. Keep that in mind if you're thinking about trying to get this or if you already got like one, you're trying to get a two. Um, even some for one, for example, Wings of Argentis, we've figured it's got about a one in a hundred chance to drop with one LP, a single LP. That means that um, you have to kill on average the the uh, the bird, I'm forgetting the bird's name, um, God Hunter. You need, to, you need to kill him on average 100 times to get one one LP item, and then you need to get lucky and slam the exalted affix that you want into it. That's a 25% chance. As you can see, these odds are not in your favor. So be careful trying to farm too heavily for legendary potential make sure you know that the item has a reasonable chance of getting it so that you can do enough legendary crafts to actually make it work okay that's it for this video i hope that helps you on your unique and set farming strategies i hope that you are able to get the items that you're looking for and finish your build and have an awesome time in the last epoch